We frequently get questions from gardeners from around the state, and, and we thought it would be kind of fun to answer some of those questions on the show. The first question I want to share with you is one that we often get from newcomers that come to Oklahoma, and that is, what zone do they live in? And th what they're referring to is, back in 1960, the USDA developed a cold hardiness zone map that's based on the average annual minimum temperatures across the country. And in Oklahoma, we live in zones six and seven, basically. Uh, these zones, uh, each zone is, is, uh, covers about 10 degrees of Fahrenheit. So for example, zone six is based on annual minimum, minimum temperatures of minus 10 to zero degrees, and zone seven from zero to plus 10 degrees Fahrenheit. Now in 1990, that map was, was revised again and has more detail to it, and each of these zones was subdivided into two, into two zones. So now we have zones 6A, 6B, zone 7A, 7B. And these zones now represent five degrees of differences. So for example, 6A would be uh, refer to areas that have annual minimum temperatures of um, minus 10 to minus 5, zone 6B from minus 5 to 0, etc. And for example, uh, Oklahoma City uh, falls under zone 7A, or temperatures around 0 to plus 5 degrees Fahrenheit. Now this map is, has been used and referenced uh, by many horticulturists and gardeners from uh, around the country to help select plants that will survive in the regions in which they live in. And it is very helpful for us as we choose plants and select them to grow in the, in the garden. However, it's just a reference. Uh, obviously, temp these are average, average temperatures, and obviously we can have some really cold uh, winters and we can have some warmer winters. And you can also take some plants that may be listed only in zones eight, which are not as cold hardy as, as zones seven or six, and you can sometimes push those up further north into colder areas by creating microclimates within your landscape. You may be able to create an area uh, and protect it from the cold and from winds uh, that will uh, allow it to grow well and survive further north than what it's actually listed for. But you do, re you do need to remember that obviously some really cold days could damage those plants and cause them to die. Now other things that you need to consider when you're, when you're selecting plants, uh, besides cold hardiness, which is a good reference, but there are other factors that we need to look at. We need to look at our, our management practices in the landscape, which can affect the growth of a plant and its ability to, uh, to harden off or adapt to the cold weather. For example, um, fertilization. If we fertilize with high nitrogen late in the summer, and early fall, we can sometimes encourage a flush of growth that will, that will be tender and won't harden off in time for the cold weather and then it can be damaged. So we need to be careful with some of the management practices we have. We also should take into consideration the heat tolerances that plants have, and that's really important in Oklahoma. Uh, even though cold hardiness is, is important, heat tolerances can sometimes be even more important in the southern states, especially in Oklahoma. We have hot, humid summers, and so we need to be aware of plants that do very well in the, in the heat of our, of our summers. Uh, I, I've lived up north uh, in uh, the northwest and where temperatures are, are colder. Uh, many plants can be planted out in full sun and they do very well. But those same plants, uh, even though they're hardy down here as far as cold tolerances, uh, they don't like to be out in the full sun in the hot, humid weather. And so you sometimes have to place them in the landscape so they can be protected from that late, hot afternoon sun. Now one of the references that we have also now is called a, uh, a heat tolerance map. And this was uh, developed by the American Horticultural Society and it has 12 zones. And these zones are based on the number of, the average number of days that are above 86 degrees. And uh, I believe that Oklahoma pretty much falls in uh, zone eight based on that map. Now this is just a general reference guide. It's probably still has some more uh, details that need to be worked out um, to, to provide uh, more detailed information about heat tolerances because as you know that uh, in, for example, large urban areas, these temperatures can really become much more warmer where, the, where there's a lot of hardscapes, concrete and asphalt, etc. So those things need to be taken into consideration also. Another question that I have received frequently by several viewers and gardeners across the state recently is, when do I plant my elephant ears? Now elephant ears are a tropical type of plant, and there are other plants that fall into this category also, such as caladiums, and even some of our annuals like the annual vinca or, or periwinkle. These plants really need to have warm temperatures, especially uh, soil temperatures. 
And if you plant them right now, uh, we could continue with cool, wet weather, uh, which is often common in the springtime. And if you plant them at this time, that cool, wet weather and soil temperatures can cause the plants to rot and die before they have a chance to grow. So what we recommend is that you wait until after the 1st of May, maybe even really till May 15th. Uh, the soil temperature should be around 65 degrees or above before we plant a lot of these warm season plants. We hope you've enjoyed this classic from the Oklahoma Gardening Vault. Remember, even though these tips and techniques are timeless, there's always something new to learn in the world of gardening. By subscribing to both Oklahoma Gardening and OK Gardening Classics, you'll have access to a wealth of gardening knowledge, both classic and contemporary.